Welcome to this edition of the Ultimate Combat Experience, Combat Chronicles, as we, as we take a look back at some fights that, quite frankly, really are what this show is all about. I'm here with uh, the greasy biker Todd Reed. How you doing, my man? I'm doing great. Thanks, Mike. Sounds right. like we have an exciting evening coming up. Oh, we absolutely do. I got to tell you, first of all, we got Zach Wojcik, a kid that comes and scraps it every time going up against a guy named Cody Schmidt. They're mirror images of one another, both very lanky, both good looking guys. But I'm looking forward to seeing these uh, Pearson brothers get out here and do their thing. Yeah, these guys look great. Um, both multiple time state champion wrestlers. Uh, very exciting. And, and they like to bring it. When they come in and fight, they like to do their thing. But your main event, you want to stick around for that because anytime the bird dog steps into the cage, it's going to be a lot of fun. Going up against Talon Torres tonight, it's the Ultimate Combat Experience. Check it out. Oh, buddy, I'm looking forward to this one. Zach Wojcik, every time he has stepped in the cage for us, he brings it. He puts on a show, Todd. This kid... Uh, He's lightning from start to finish. The only thing we have seen is his fight style is so active that uh, sometimes he runs out of gas as the fight goes on. But for the most part, this kid's in amazing shape, and he really likes to get in there and bang heads with whoever is standing across the cage from him. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what Cody does. If uh, he's going to stand there and bang with him or go straight to the ground. Either way, he's got his work cut out for him tonight. Yeah, he does. You know, Zach is a, an accomplished wrestler, did very well in high school. I think he uh, actually wrestled with uh, John Kafer a little bit. And uh, but Cody, Sch Cody uh, Schmidt says, you know, look, man, I did a little wrestling myself, and I've been in a lot of street fights, and um, obviously he's in, in a fight with his tattoo artist. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what, these motocross guys are pretty tough. Yeah, you know, you, you, you bang your head a lot in that sport, and, and this is a head-banging sport for sure. Dave Selyestead, your referee for this contest, giving a few last-minute instructions to these guys and saying, buddy, let's do this. Don't hit in the back of the head. You can't hit here. You can't hit here, but let's do lots of hitting nonetheless. Touch of the gloves, and here we go. Round number one, Todd, and again, these two guys, I expect... Fireworks, and you know what? They do not disappoint going right out and getting right after it. Zach Wojcik with a nice hip throw, but I see Cody Schmidt, you know, he's, you can tell he's a little bit inexperienced. That whole head grab thing right there is, a, is something that new guys do. You grab onto that head and you don't want to let go, but you put yourself in a bad situation. Able to get to his feet again, but look at what Zach Wojcik dumps him right on his back again. Cody's going to get gassed if he keeps going like he is. Well, they're both going to get gassed if they keep going like this. It's a pretty... Uh, uh, frenetic pace they've got going on here, but Zach Wojcik, kind of uh, more, how should I say, a controlled uh, anger, or controlled um, uh, craziness. He's got, the, he's he's uh, able to, to come out on top. He's like a cat landing on his feet each and every time they come into a scramble. Once again, you see uh, Cody reaching back for the head, and that's not going to get you anywhere. All it's going to do is put you in a bad position. It's it's made it easy for uh, Zach Wojcik to get an overhook and keep with that hip toss. Now he's in full mount position, raining down the shots, and this fight, I think, is close to being over. And, yep, that looks like that one's in there pretty tight. Zach Wojcik's got that choke in. Uh, yeah, there you tap. go, there's a the tap. And Dave Selye said, says, you know what, enough's enough. We're going to uh, well, we're gonna call it the conclusion of this fight. Zach Wojcik doing kind of what we thought he would do. I expected a little bit more out of Cody Schmidt. And speaking with him before the fight, I know he was pretty confident coming in here. But uh, maybe he didn't really quite know what he was getting himself into. Shaking up the cobwebs there. Yeah. Well, always time to gangsta pose with your boys in the corner there. Zach Wojcik. Coming away with the big win, and Cody Schmidt getting a little gentle hug. <laughs> Condolence <laughs> for, for him. You know, I, I hope Cody comes back in here and does this again. It's one of those things, your first visit to the cage, uh, it can be pretty intimidating, and maybe it looks easier from the side when you get in here, but Zach Wojcik uh, once again coming away with a big win. All right, let's get down to the next fight. Looks like we've got Chase Pearson and Jan Daniel Grass. Now, Chase is a kid that wrestled uh, a lot, and not only wrestled, he was like a three or four time state champion down there in the, the southern parts of the state. Uh, extremely accomplished wrestler. Daniel Grass is a kid we've seen a lot of. He fights all the time, 
and is getting better and better as he goes. And and he's fought some of the tough guys in the division. He's fought some of the tougher guys in this show. He's you know he's been in three different divisions, so he'll take a fight against anyone, anytime, anywhere. Uh, but I think he's got his hands full here with uh, with Chase Pearson. Yeah, I'm gonna have to agree. These are both two strong kids. I. I think it's going to be pretty exciting right from the beginning. Chase is a bit of vertically challenged, as you can see. He's a shorter guy, but um, he's just he's short, he's squatty, and, and he's one of those goers. I saw him wrestle in high school. I used to referee, and, and I saw him wrestle. And he's just one of those kids that uh, he's got fifth gear, and that's it. He doesn't have it. You know, and he doesn't slow down at all. And we'll have to see how that translates into the cage. This is Chase's first visit to the cage against Daniel Grass. A touch of the gloves, and here we go. Grass throwing a couple of kind of sloppy hands. You know, he does have that reach advantage, and he's, if he's smart, he stays outside. Well, apparently he's not smart because he didn't stay outside. Got inside on a guy that can throw you in a hurry and throw you well. That was a very nice throw by Chase Pearson. Yeah, he took him straight to the ground, flipped him right over his head. Nice thing about, you know, Chase is, you know, he's a wrestler. He understands hip control. He left his arm behind there. I thought maybe Daniel Grass had a shot at an arm bar. And now he's looking, it looks like he's looking for a go-go plata or something up underneath there. He's got that shin up against the throat. He's looking to choke. Uh, kind of a tricky little choke, but Chase Pearson, you know, he's, he's a strong kid. And he says, I don't really like the way that feels. Chase Pearson hanging out in the garden is probably not the best place for him to be. A wrestler shouldn't get too comfortable in somebody's guard. You know, and they have a tendency to do that because they've got the guy in the back. And in wrestling, that's where you want to get somebody. Uh, you've got him on your back, uh, on their back, but, you know, they've got you in their legs. And, and Daniel Grass's guard is getting much, much better. His submission repertoire is getting much, much more diverse. As you saw that attempt that he had, you know, right there at the beginning. And that's a new choke. We haven't seen him do that before. And it's probably something he just learned off the interwebs or something. And, uh came in and tried it out here, didn't quite get it, but but you know, uh, you just never know what, with this kid. Chase and Grass has a pretty good uh, reach advantage over him too, so he's doing fine on his back though. He's able to reach up and uh, well, he's got a reach advantage. And that would have been a better uh, tool on his feet. <laughs> you know, Chase controls the spacing right here, so obviously down that reach advantage didn't didn't do him a whole lot of good right here. Uh, Daniel trying to reach around and get a guillotine from underneath there, and that is where those long arms are going to come in handy. If he's able to get this, I'll be very surprised. That's a hard move to get from underneath there to, from the position they were in. He almost got it, but not quite. Chase obviously sensing the danger and, and uh, got his head out of there. What Chase should do is, is pass his guard, I and mean, he doesn't know that. I think he's, he's again, he's, he's on, his, on the ground, and he's just looking to control down there. Uh, he should pass his guard and look to improve his position. Now that figure four body lock, that's very uncomfortable, especially for a wrestler. You start taking their ability to take big, deep breaths away, and uh, that can can really neutralize them. Daniel's coming over the top with some heavy hands there to the, uh, the side of the head there. Yeah. And, you know, into the body. He's, he's doing very, fairly well on the bottom. His striking, I'm pretty impressed with. He's active. He's not just kind of hanging out on bottom. But he's got to work to improve his, his position. That right there, that scissor on the body, that also was uncomfortable. But you know what else it does? It wears your legs down. When you come back up on your feet, you're going to have rubber legs. And it didn't really do a whole lot to damage your opponent other than make him super uncomfortable. Chase Pearson continuing to pound away once again, not even looking to pass uh, that guard there, Daniel Grass. And, and really, if he wants to win this fight, if he wants to, to, to there we go. Dave Sully said he saw enough. Let's take him back up on their feet. Chase Pearson's got to get outside of the guard of Daniel Grass. You can see Daniel Grass walking a little funky right there. His legs are a little bit rubbery. And it uh, looks like that, that's the end of the first round. So we're going to take a little break here. Uh, round number two coming up, and coming up in a very glorious way there. Absolutely. <laughs> it's one of my favorite part. It's my favorite part. All right, uh, the ringside posi position, taking a look at both uh, competitors. Looks like they're both ready to go, and I'm ready to go. My heart's are racing right now. <laughs> Daniel Grass not looking very good, though. He's the guy that was on bottom and taking a beating, and boy, he looks like he's really struggling to get up off that stool. Um, well... I think he's going to come back there. Daniel Grass is a gamer. He's, he's a gamer. Is that Donnie Rains working his corner there? It looks like it might be. Yeah, it looks like it is. 
I think we're going to see Daniel up on his feet this round. I think he had just a little too much on his back. Well, Donnie Reigns is one of the more accomplished fighters in this show, man. Been around a long, long time, and I was interested to see the pairing there that he's working with Daniel Grass a little bit. Uh, maybe he's just working his corner. I don't know. But Donnie Reigns is a very good submission artist, and maybe that's where some of those uh, submission moves that we're seeing out of Daniel Grass are coming from. Maybe he's training with old Donnie over there. All right, Dave Sully said, said round number two, it's time. Let's get it going again here. And uh, touch of the gloves here, kind of a meager touch of the gloves, but they're ready to go again. Not very well versed on his feet. You can see that uh, old Pearson there, he, his hands are flying all over the place when he kicks. And, and uh, Daniel Grass, if he's smart, keeps it on his feet, picks him apart from the outside. Trying that front kick on several occasions, you know. That reach is what's going to win this for him if he does. What he needs to do is cut off the cage and get Pearson against the cage rather than trying these, these kicks from the outside in the center of the cage where Pearson's able to step back and elude them. Uh, he's got, he needs to corner him a little bit and then attack. Oh, buddy, got a little shot to the ding ding. You know how that feels, right? Tom? That looks painful. <laughs> I'll tell you what, that is painful. Yeah, you know, it's, uh, I guess that's the great neutralizer when you're giving up some reach advantage, just take them down to your size. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the way the rule books reads, uh, Daniel Grass has five minutes to recover. We're going to find out if he's able to make it back up to his feet when we come back. Welcome back to the Ultimate Combat Experience. If you're just joining us, uh, Daniel Grass just took a shot to the ding ding and we had to take a commercial break because it took him so long to get back on his feet. Daniel Chase. Grass coming back in a big way though. Got the back of Chase Pearson and this is really ugly for Chase. Bad idea to get his back up. Yeah, you know, Chase Pearson had total control in the first round and it looked like he kind of took a wild swing and turned around and Daniel Grass capitalizing very quickly coming up and getting on the back of Chase Pearson. And I'm not sure Chase Pearson knows what to do here. Chase Pearson, obviously a very strong kid, but you can only be so strong with that uh, arm wrapped around your throat. And Daniel Grass slowly but surely working to sink that, that choke on there. Chase Pearson, not really quite sure. You can see he's hand fighting a little bit like a wrestler would, but he's hand fighting and, and not well looks like he's gotten his hands off a little bit cleared the throat and, and now Daniel Grass actually losing position coming out to the side just a little bit he needs to get back up on top control those hips which he's doing right here nice job of maintaining that underhook on the left side so he can keep himself from falling all the way off it looks like he's trying to like a power half to get uh, Chase Pearson back on his uh, to get completely on Chase Pearson's back and looks like he was successful in doing so and I think he's got that figure four on the body once again Chase Pearson's really in a bad spot right here he's got to hang on to that arm there because if he loses control of it Daniel Grass is going to wrap it around his throat and uh, put him to sleep yeah Chase is really struggling to get out of this Daniel's got him really good yeah, well, he's got him, and now he's got the armor on. I think that it's just a matter of time now. This might now. be it. This uh, is definitely it. I don't see Chase Pearson really quite knowing. Well, gosh, he's doing a great job of battling it out, you know, just sucking it up down there, being a tough kid. But, you know, um, he's, I don't know if he realizes the amount of danger that he's in. He's got to – it's kind of one of those situations, Todd, where it's it's an emergency. you got to act like it's an emergency. you got something down your back. You've got to go – Easy. Get he that kid up moving. I think they're going to stop this fight. Oh, well, yeah. He's, they may stop it for strikes. Well, now Daniel Grass, he's not getting that arm in deep enough. He keeps bringing it around the chin, and he's got to put it up underneath that chin so he can uh, cut the blood supply off to to Chase Pearson's head. But, you know, well, let's, what are we stopping it for? What just happened here? Did Dave Sully said stop this fight? Did he tap? I didn't see a tap. I didn't see a tap either. I'm not sure what happened. Maybe it's is it the end of the round? <laughs> Daniel Grass looks like he was the one who was getting choked out right there. Oh, no, we've seen this time and again. You know, this has a lot to do with conditioning. Okay. Both these guys work hard. Yeah, I guess it was the end of the uh, second round there. Chase Pearson dodging a bullet there. 
Daniel Grass clearly winning that round, however. And, you know, the first round, uh, I think Chase Pearson won. Whoa, we have a little wardrobe malfunction on our green girl. See <laughs> not a crack. And we're okay with that. <laughs> all right, well, I'm not complaining. I was just, uh, all right, so Daniel Grass getting a little spritz over there in the corner. <laughs> Uh, he's he's tired. He's very, very tired. Fatigue is obviously setting in. It's the one advantage that we mentioned at the first of the fight here that Chase uh, Pearson is going to have. He's a goer. He's a kid that can go three solid rounds. But it's a little bit different going three solid rounds on top versus three solid rounds on bottom. Chase Pearson also pretty tired, but he looks like he's in a little better shape than Daniel Grass is right now. Round number three. This has been a great fight so far. Um... It's anybody's ball game at this point. I, I have it around a piece. I have a clear cut round a piece. And there you go. Chase Pearson closing the gap, getting a nice right hand in there, spinning Daniel Grass around. Uh, and again, that's a sign of fatigue. I mean, he wasn't hit that hard, but his complete body response to it. Daniel Grass is, um, yeah, he's having a little bit of a hard time right here. Now, now he's in trouble. Now he's in big trouble. Daniel Grass, the one thing about him, he's super flexible. He's, he's like Gumby. The kid bends in half. Uh, but this is just not a very comfortable position to be in. Chase Pearson, actually, I'm really surprised at how um, patient he's being right here. He's not trying to, to you know, rush anything. He's maintaining position and looking for uh, optimal targets. And he's finding them here and there. Now, Pearson knows he has much better ground game. I think he feels pretty comfortable sitting where he's at right now. It's a good time for him to, he's probably catching his breath. I've seen Daniel Grass come out the back door this way. He's done it before, and he's trying to do it again. He's trying to come out, well, taking it to the face now, though. I think, you know, that's one of those things where Chase Pearson recognized him. Goes. Yeah, he did get out, but he didn't get out completely. He stayed down on the ground, and Chase Pearson able to rotate over and uh, get back on top. Couple left hands to the face. Daniel Grass now just kind of hanging on to the head, something we mentioned earlier that it's kind of a sign of inexperience. I, I, I don't know that uh, Daniel Grass, maybe he's just trying to stop the onslaught of the punches and um, he should let go of the head is what he should do. And he's curled up in a ball here. There's, there's literally no offense whatsoever. It's, it's complete defense and not very good defense at that. No, and both of these guys have given up their backs numerous times. Well, Jace Pearson fatigue set in, and, and, and again, inexperience set in. He didn't have his hooks in there, so he lost the back of Daniel Grass, uh, which you know is something, again, that I think Chase Pearson, you see him get a little more experience in this game, he, he wouldn't make that mistake again. You know, this is where uh, Chase Pearson's going to have a huge advantage in, in these scramble situations because he, he uh, was able on his feet to get those hips and, and uh, get a nice takedown. Back in full mount. Back in full mount, but doing not a whole lot with it. He's, you know, pepper in the side of Daniel Grass's head. You're not seeing a whole lot of uh, really effective blows here. It's more of, of an annoyance. Annoying enough to have Daniel Grass almost reverse things right here. Uh, Daniel Grass actually has a pretty uh, halfway decent half guard, and he's but I, I, he's just too tired. He's got to get that right hand underhook and and come out, but he's just kind of hanging out, holding under the head. I just don't get it. Yeah, we're seeing a little bit of blood there on the back of Chase. Well, that that would indicate that Daniel Grass is bleeding because he was on <laughs> his back a little while ago, and I think Daniel Grass is bleeding. He's just not. You got to let go of that head. He, he thinks he's got some figure four uh, choke. I don't know, but he. He hangs on. It looks like that's going to do it. Uh, he hangs on to get to the judges. We're going to send it to the judges. Um, I, I see Chase Pearson winning this fight two rounds to one, but uh, you just never know with the judges in this town. Just quite frankly, they really don't know what they're watching sometimes. Oh, Rusty Pearson in the corner of Chase. Uh, they're Rusty, one of the good guys, been around for a long, long time, and uh, obviously Chase's big brother. Uh, both of them very accomplished wrestlers, and and uh, Rusty over there giving Chase some words of advice. Daniel Grass, your right eye uh, is swollen. <laughs> took some shots there, buddy. It took a lot of them. Donnie Rain's trying to get things cleared up here. But, well, it looks like Chase Pierce is going to come away with a big win right here. Congratulations. Next up, I think we've got, uh, well, later in the program, we've got Rusty Pearson coming up. Stick around for that.
Welcome back to the Ultimate Combat Experience. Boy, oh boy, if you're just joining us, we've had some great fights tonight. Uh, we've got a couple new guys coming in here. Never seen either one of these guys fight before. Ryan Turner going up against Zachary Myers, and we know absolutely nothing about either one of these guys. Todd, you got a chance to chat with uh, Ryan Turner earlier this week. What did he have to say about what he did to prepare for this fight? You know, he's been hitting the gym every day of the week, training hard working on his ground game. I don't want to interrupt you, but you see old Josh Berkman working his game right there on the way to <laughs> Yes, he is. <laughs> Josh Berkman of UFC fame doing his thing and uh, yeah, sitting cage side there. Josh Berkman, of course, you know, got his start in this show and uh, he's taking it to, to all new levels. All right, looks like Zachary Myers making his way to the cage, getting a little dust up right there. He put the Vaseline on his face there, so punches slide off nice and easy and uh all right there we go did you get a chance to to, to chat with uh, zach myers at all no i didn't he was he just got into town late and um we didn't get a chance to talk to him too much uh so it's good he's kind of one of those unknown commodities that come into the show from time to time ryan turner zach myers other than he's been working hard that's and he's got a really cool tattoo that's pretty much all we know Round number one, about to get underway with these guys. And again, strap yourselves in. These are the fights that sometimes turn out to be the gems. You just never know what's going to happen. Well, you can see both these guys are uh, gunslingers. They're throwing punches from the hip. And they're, they've got bad intentions on every one of those punches. They're throwing some heavy fists out there. They yep. want it. No doubt about it. And, boy, I, those couple of those punches looked low to me. But, um, you know, I guess to each his own right here. So, um Here's that old head glom, I like to call it. You hang on to the head, you don't want to let go, and all you're doing is making your arms tired. You're not doing a darn thing to your opponent other than making him uncomfortable. Um, so if, if I could give any advice to any of you new guys out there, let go of the head, get back into the fight. Uh, right there, a strike to the head. Now, in Utah, you cannot strike to the head of a downed opponent. You can't strike a downed opponent. You have to both be back up on your feet in order to, uh, to, to throw a strike. Now this rule came from, we had a, a, a commission director that was in charge of things here in Utah that sat cage side and thought this was the most vicious, brutal sport he had ever seen. And so he went back to the boardroom and made some new rules, said you couldn't do it. So it's a rule that's exclusive to Utah only. Uh, we're working to get that one changed, but right there, uh, Ryan Turner getting in trouble. Nice for kick. That was a nice kick and a nice uppercut as well. And a nice big left hand uh, coming from Zach Myers. Now these guys are starting to connect a little bit until well, that Look at happened. that. That was a wind up <laughs> if I'd ever seen one. Yeah, these guys throw uh, punches from left field for sure. Straighten things up, fellas. Get your hands up would be my first piece of advice for Zach there. Oh, he's taking a couple. We got off a the couple chin. windmills out there. These guys are <laughs> swinging for the fence. Yeah, they certainly are. And people love this stuff, man. People eat it up. You can hear the people here at uh, Club Elevate. They're getting into it. They're loving it. Well, Turner's got some good kicks in there. You see, when he starts to get close, he's bringing those feet up and uh, putting the distance between the two of them. Yeah, he hasn't done too bad. He's gotten those the big kicks to the body. You can see actually Turner's body is, uh, excuse me, Myers' body is, is red from those kicks. And he's starting to uh, to wane a little bit. I think you're going to see that this is the beginning of the end for him. Well, he you know, every time you think he's done, he comes back with a big shot of his own. But he is eating some big shots here in round number one. And uh, you know, I'll be interested to see how long he can last. Uh, under these kind of conditions. Yeah, I think a few of those kicks might have taken the wind out of Meyer's cell there. He's he's sucking for air. <laughs> these guys are going to go back to work on Monday looking uh, like they've been in a, they've been in uh, blood sport <laughs> <laughs> or fight club or something, you know. These uh, there's not an ounce of defense from either one of them, but uh, tons of pretty sloppy offense. But yeah, they just sit there and watch the punch coming. Let's, let's not put the hands up. Let's see how hard I can get hit. You know, there's some charm to that, Todd. There's some charm to that. You got to give some uh, props to these guys that, you know, at one point they were sitting on the couch watching this show and saying, you know, I can do that. And guess what? They came and did that. And who knows how uh, much longer they'll be wanting to do this. But right now they're putting on a show for the fans, and the fans are loving what they're seeing. Looks like uh, Turner's bringing, 
bleeding from the right eye there. Yeah, he's got a pretty nice little cut to the right eye. Looks like round number one is coming to a close, and these guys can't even get up, let alone get back to their corners on their own. Uh, man, oh man, boy, are the legs wobbly on Zachary Myers. And they're not wobbly because he got hit. They're wobbly because he is just out of gas. Speaking of gas. Uh, wow. <laughs> round number two. On the way, uh, I, I'll, I'll be interested to see if these guys are able to come out for round number two because that was, um, that was a pretty frenetic first round. Both guys throwing everything they had. It looks like we're going to get to it round number two here. I have a feeling we we're going to see a lot go. of the same thing we did in the first round. These two are going to get after it. I, I'll be very, very surprised if this makes it to round three. I, don't, I'm, I was surprised they got off the stools. If they make it to the end of this round, it'll be it'll be a, the biggest shock of the year. <laughs> nice, that, that kick has landed twice again, and those kicks will really take it out of you, but that left hand, I think, is what's gonna finish this fight. Um, Giving up his back. Yeah, well, Ryan Turner landing a big left hand, knocking Zach Myers to the ground. Um, oh, well, geez, man, so now he gave up his back. <laughs> the, the fortunate thing for Turner is that Myers doesn't know what to do now that he's there. He's got his back. He doesn't know what to do. He just kind of hung on there for a minute and was able to take a little bit of a rest, but that's not going to really help him much in the big picture. Turner now, excuse me, Myers now pressing Turner up against the cage, not really taking advantage of the position that he's got. Uh, once again, neither guy really looking for underhooks or any of those kind of things that you should be looking for when you're in close quarters there. And they were happy to just to step back and punch each other in the face some more. I think Turner's just looking for the big hit there. He knows that Myers is winded. He's just yeah, waiting for that. Oh, he's Burn. claiming that was a groin shot. Dave saw he said not seeing. Well, I guess he did see it that way. He's going to give him a little respite. It's the second groin shot we've seen tonight. Um, hopefully these guys are wearing their cups into the cage and are able to come back. They might just be after that five minutes of rest. You know, they both maybe. Maybe, maybe they <laughs> whispered in each other's ear. Why don't you kick? Are you going to kick me or I'll kick you? You, you call it. Use that rest here. Oh, says he's ready to go, and now he's bleeding pretty profusely from the nose. So uh, both guys, you know, been caught with some shots. Both guys, uh, looks like they're ready to continue this thing. That's the hardest hit we've seen all day right there. Touch of the gloves. Yeah, yeah I, I just don't, I think that uh, Zach Myers is done. Yep, you're going to see right there. That's this, it. Get it. This is it. Uh, just a one-two to the groin and then a one-two to the face. So that's going to do it. Dave Sellistead stopping this contest. Uh, Ryan, Ryan Turner coming out uh, on top. Zach Myers not able to even get up off the, the canvas to get back to his corner. You know, you know what, though, Todd? 99.9% .9 of the, the human population will not know what it's like to get inside of this cage and do it. So much uh, love to both these guys getting in there and do it. But looks like um, Ryan Turner. Going to come away with a big win tonight. And um, come on, Dave, let's get it done. Raise his hand. He's too tired. He needs to go sit down and get himself a nice cold beer. I guess Dave thought it was picture day. We're going to get a picture taken here. Not a very technical fight, but I love seeing these big guys get in there and Look, just bang it out. You know, technical has its moments. I love, they kind of, we, that's what I love about the Ultimate Combat experience. We got a little bit of everything, man. We mix it up. We bring the, the new guys in. They get a chance. The uh, veterans get a chance. Well, this time right here, now uh, Ryan Turner's a veteran. He's now no longer a, a novice at this and uh, walking away with a big win tonight. Congratulations. Welcome back to the Ultimate Combat Experience. My goodness, Jay Jensen. Man, we haven't seen this kid in a little while. He's a jailer over at the Salt Lake County Jail and uh, had to take care of me a night or two. Brought me my underwear. <laughs> Up and nice. <laughs> Jay Jensen, uh, he's one of those kids that he's not pretty to watch, Todd. He's not uh, the most refined fighter, but he is tough as nails. He has given some of the better fighters we've had in this show all they can handle. Uh, if you remember, Sterling Natsuma had uh, a 
very, very difficult time with him. But he's going up against the, the older brother of, of Chase Pearson, who's already gotten a big win today. Rusty Pearson, he's a guy that um, he was he was a tougher of the two. I got I got to say that he he is one good wrestler. So you've got a guy that's a stander and a brawler, and you've got a guy that who's an amazing wrestler. And it uh, should be interesting to see what happens here. Style, style matchup sometimes what makes exciting fights. Touch of the gloves, and here we go. And I love Rusty Pearson's John Stockton shorts. He's looking good in those. Come out with a big right kick. Just missing uh, Jay Jensen right there. You see Jensen is expecting that takedown. And, of course, Rusty Pearson taking it. He's yeah, got some great kicks. Adam. That is not something I expected to see at him. A nice Superman, Superman punch as well. And... My goodness, there you go. He got he closed the gap enough to get a hold of Rusty, or excuse me, uh, Jay Jensen's hips and brought him down to the ground. Jockeying for position here. Jay Jensen knows he's got to get out. He's got to either pull guard or, or get out from underneath there. And um, Rusty Pearson obviously knowing how to control those hips. Years and years of wrestling. Been wrestling since he was just a little guy. And they're doing a good job of controlling the steps. Looking to get that arm now. Jay Jensen trying to put in a guillotine. And it's kind of, wow, good. Uh, he's sinking it in there. He's got the arm in circle, which makes it a little bit tougher, especially with Jay, or with uh, Rusty Pearson coming out to the side. I think Rusty's just going to keep on moving around until he can get out of that. He's, it, he's smart. He's that, working it. And that is uncomfortable right there uh, to have your head being squoze in right there he's, because Jay Jensen's gotten it down underneath the chin, which makes it super uncomfortable. But stay out to the side there, and you're just fine. You're not in any danger of getting um, choked out or, or, or submitted. But, uh, you know, sometimes if you haven't been in that position before, you don't realize that you're not in trouble because it hurts. It's uncomfortable. Yeah, Pearson looks pretty relaxed. Yeah, he yeah, did no, a nice job. Did a nice job of backing out and then now passing the guard of Jay Jensen, getting his back. I'm telling you though, Jay Jensen's one of those guys you're gonna have a hard time putting away. He's he, he finds himself in these really bad positions against really good fighters, and somehow gets out of them time and time again. Rusty Pearson teeing away right here at the side of the head of uh, Jay Jensen. Yeah, even though he's hitting the arm there, that still doesn't feel good. There's big, heavy hands coming in there. I'll tell you what, uh, Rusty Pearson has really grown as a fighter. He's gotten much, much better as time has gone by. He used to be strictly a wrestler, now he's a fighter. You're seeing him doing a great job of pounding away at the head until Jay Jensen moved his arms, and when he did, he sunk in that choke right there. Right now, it's more of a face crank or a neck crank. He doesn't have that choke in uh, underneath the chin where it can do some real damage, but still super uncomfortable, and I've seen a lot of guys tap from a super hard neck crank like that. Just like a leg rider in, in wrestling, he's doing a good job of keeping those legs in there and then hip riding, keeping a, uh, his body coming across. If he stays uh, parallel to him, sometimes you'll see him uh, be able to escape bring, by making it come down to the side, but stay right up on top, come perpendicular like that, and, and it, uh, you should be able to get that ride. Yeah, you got to give it up for Jay right here. You know, he's, uh, he, Rusty's all over him, and Jay's not really scrambling. It seems like he's uh, taking his time thinking about what he's going to do next before he gets caught up in something. Well, you know, I'd like to see him do a little bit more underneath. He did cover up fairly well, uh, protected himself, but he did survive the round. We got more ultimate combat when we come back. Good job. Where was my 10 seconds? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to the Ultimate Combat Experience. Round number two between Rusty Pearson and Jay Jensen. Uh, if you missed round number one, it was a great fight. Uh, Rusty Pearson able to get the back of Jay Jensen and, and really had him in quite a bit of trouble most of that round. Boy, oh boy, I tell you what. Nice Ru right. Rusty Pearson's stand-up has grown by leaps and bounds. I see the way he created space and took that space away and landed that big right hand and now throwing that Superman punch again. His striking has come a long, long way. That's what we know him for right there, though. Getting that hip control, that nice takedown uh, in wrestling. He would have put his opponent right on his back and be scoring points right now. But but he, he was able to get that nice takedown and stayed in control. That's what you see a lot of guys do. They'll get a takedown like this, and they don't go down with them. He's staying in control. He's complaining now that Jay's just kind of hanging on to his arms. And this is kind of a wrestling thing. He's stalling. He's hanging on to my arm. Well, you know, uh, Dave Sully said, well, if you're not going to do anything, I'll just bring you back up to your feet. I think that's where Jay feels a lot more comfortable. 
Well, that's where he lands those big shots. And again, he's not pretty, but he's he's not been able to do that so far today. And, and Rusty Pearson has been able to get inside and land some big shots. Nice uh, double leg takedown coming up underneath the striking of Jay Jensen uh, with, with a nice takedown. Rusty looking to improve position here, and Jensen just kind of hanging on. And you know, I'll tell you what the J that Jensen's good at doing. He can hang on, and, and for whatever reason, his arms don't seem to wear down like a lot of guys do. He he does this head squeeze a lot, but uh, he does it pretty. He, they say he's just crazy strong, uh, so he does his head squeeze, and he's pretty effective with it. And it seems like his arms don't t tend to tire like the average guy. Well, he's got him pressed up against the fence there. It's making it hard for him to move. Rusty's trying to come back over into that full mount. Just that can't get past the leg. That left leg there is what's keeping Rusty Pearson there. And what almost made this guillotine work because Rusty wasn't able to raise his hips up and take the pressure off his neck. Uh, but now that obviously he lost that. But that was a really interesting uh, move that Jay Jensen had on there. You don't want to leave those arms extended out there like that against a good submission guy because you'd be armbarred already by now if... Uh, Rusty was more proficient on the ground. Rusty said, you know what, I don't like this spot. I'm, I've been picking you apart on my feet. Let's go back up on our feet, and I'll continue to pick you apart. You know, this isn't something I thought I would have seen out of Rusty in this fight. I thought he would have taken everything to the ground, but he's feeling just as comfortable as uh, Jensen is up there on his feet. He is. If he would just take a half a step in when he, take, when he throws that kick to the head, He'd probably have a knockout by now, but he, he just he stays planted and throws that kick up. It's beautiful to look and beautiful to see, but it, it's not, it's not going to land unless you close the gap or throw it when they're up against the cage. Nice takedown once again by Rusty Pearson. And Jay just got dumped on his back. Yeah, he sure did. And doing the old hang on there again. I think uh, round number two is in the books. These guys have a lot of respect for one another because they both bring it when they bring it. We're going to see round three when we come back. Welcome back once again to the Ultimate Combat Experience, round number three of three between Rusty Pearson and Jay Jensen, the chicken Jay Jensen. Jay uh, doing himself proud today. He's, he's really put up a heck of a fight, but we expect that out of him every time he comes to fight. A little bit outmatched by Rusty Pearson, I'd have to say. Yeah, I think uh, Rusty's got a little better conditioning going on. You can see here. Jay's struggling a little bit. I don't know if it's uh, so much the condition is getting dumped on your back and pounded. Yeah, you know, you've got a guy that is so good and can take you down in so many different ways. Um, and he has. He's used hip throws. He's double leg takedowns. He's, he's done just about everything a wrestler could. Open up the entire playbook on, on Jay Jensen. And, and Jay, unfortunately, finds himself in this position all too many times in this fight where he's just he can't move you know he's, he's overwhelmed by the positioning of of uh, rusty pearson and it doesn't look like jay's even trying to move right now i think he might have uh, found the end of his rope here i think he might be right yeah i think we've got a lot of exciting things to see from both of the pearson brothers <laughs> right there he's saying he's okay with his eyebrows <laughs> Oh, no, he thought about tapping right there. He thought, oh, there you go. He's had enough. You know, he thought about it. Then he said, no, he thought about it again. <laughs> well, he hung in there. He did, man. Jay Jensen is a gamer. This kid, I, I would go to war with him any day of the week. He is one tough kid, and, and uh, there's no quitting him, that's for sure. Rusty yeah. Pearson knows he had his hands full today. Yeah. Two great athletes. You know, I love to see that after a fight, too. They give each other props yeah, and, you stuff. know. You know, and, and, sports and, and again, Jay's not the prettiest guy to watch, but he's a gamer, man. He will hang with some of the best guys out there. Uh, Rusty Pearson being that best guy today. Getting her done. Old uh, Rusty Pearson. We're going to roll right into our main event. My goodness, I cannot wait for this one. Talon Torres, James Birdsley. Now, if you haven't watched this program before, let me fill you in on the bird dog, James Birdsley. Well, let's first of all, we'll talk about Talon Torres. This kid's amazing. He's got a tremendous upside. He's going places. He's going to be in the big shows one day. I fully believe that. He's another Southern Utah that comes up, uh, brings a ton of people when he does, uh, but he, and he brings his A game every time he fights. Very well-rounded, good stand-up, good ground, good wrestling, all the above. Now the Bird Dog, on the other hand, you can see right there, he's a special character. I really, really like Bird Dog. <laughs> 
He's been around for a long time, and we really thought at one point he might have some potential to go places. Uh, he's just, he's a kid that can't seem to stay out of trouble, can't seem to, to keep his head on straight. He does really well for a time, but then he, he kind of falls off, I guess, you know. Uh, he's, he's, he's one of those kids that, um, I don't know. I, I don't know how to explain Bird Dog. He's, he's a good kid. He really is. I really like him. But, man, sometimes he just, he just has a difficult time navigating life. Yeah, it's always exciting watching him in the ring, though. He's a, he's a strong kid. He's fast. And he'll come for you. And he's a kind of funny dude, too, man. <laughs> he'll come up with a funny one-liner here and there. But I think he's got his hands full here. Talon Torres is a kid that I really think there's some tremendous upside to. You can see Bill Colbert sticking his big fat mug in the middle there trying to see what's going on. Dave Sally said, going to get us started. It's your main event, Talon Torres and the Bird Dog. Here we go. Let's get it going. Touch of the gloves and kind of feeling each other out here. Torres moving. Oh, Bird Dog yep. coming out swinging some big shots. Torres able to do a nice tight clinch while he was looking to, to land some knees. It looked like the Bird Dog wise to that. Dropped down and got a nice double leg takedown. Didn't want to follow Torres to the ground. He knows Torres has got a very dangerous guard and wisely stayed up on his feet. I think he surprised Torres oh, there. Oh, buddy. And out he goes. Well, the Bird Dog is seeing tweet tweet right now. <laughs> wow. He got caught with a big right hand, I believe is what it was. And uh, went that was huge. Tubby night night. Torres, like I said, he brings a lot of people when he comes up here, and they are ecstatic right now. There was a lot of trash talk between these two leading up to the fight. Bird Dog will get into a trash talk war with just about anybody, and Talon Torres is no exception to that. Uh, they, they, there was a lot of talk between the Bird Dog fans. Bird Dog fans can be kind of aggressive at the show sometimes, and the Torres fans are like, yeah, you know what? We're not impressed. And uh, boy, oh boy, Talon Torres getting it done tonight. He's still sleeping. Birdie, 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 birdie. <laughs> Somebody wake Bird Dog up. It's time to drink. Get up, Bird Dog. Yeah, you got to be careful when these guys come too, because half the time they still think they're fighting. They come, they wake up with yeah, a punch yeah. coming at you. Seen that happen a time or two. You know, Bird Dog's okay. I I, I know this kid, man. He's, he's well, he's not okay right now. He's sleeping, but uh, I promise you he'll be all right. We got the best medics in the business over there doing their thing. And it's starting to come around now. Got a little smelling salts in him. It's coming up. Bird Dog going to get back up to his feet. There you go. There's a smelling salt. Come on, Bird Dog. The problem is that smelling salt don't work on and work if that brain of yours doesn't really click on half the time. So, well, this is taking very long. <laughs> I thought he'd be up and on his feet by now. Looks like he's all right. So let's talk about Talon Torres for a minute. This kid, um, he's, he's had been contacted by a couple of the bigger shows. He's thinking about going, and you know, he says he wants to get a few more fights in here. And this is one of the fights he really wanted to get because it became personal between him and Bird Dog. Uh, he felt like he had something to prove here, and uh, so he came here and proved it tonight. But does you know does this mean he's it's, he's ready to take that next step, or do you think he's going to stick around a little while longer? You got a chance to talk to him, Todd. Yeah, I think he's going to stick around for a minute. I, uh, he's a pretty smart kid. I think he knows uh, that he needs a couple more fights under his belt just to just to get him where he wants to be to move into the the big, the big, show. The big yeah. show. You know, and you know, it's interesting you say that with Josh Berkman sitting cage side here. He'll be the first guy to tell you that you know you move too fast and it's a huge mistake. It's you know you don't want to take things too quickly. Talon Torres, man, I'm looking forward to seeing big things out of you. Great job tonight. Got the big win in KO fashion. Another great fight. I think the bird dog's seeing some little birdie birdies flying around his head. <laughs> I think so. Torres with some heavy hands right there. That was awesome. Uh, Torres, we knew something. Somebody, one of them was going down, but it uh, ended up being the bird dog taking a little nappy nap. But I guarantee you that kid will be back. He's that guy that he'll be back. Awesome. Can't wait to see him. All right, next week we've got a couple of heavyweights. You want to tune in next week? We'll see you next time on the Ultimate Combat Experience.